because memory is a skill it can be developed you, you, you it's not just about blessings although you know some people are talented at at uh, you know whatever music and and they have an easier time of it but anybody who's willing to you know put in the hard work can also achieve great things and and that's what we're saying you can improve your memory vastly beyond what it is now even if you don't feel that you have a good memory so we would encourage you to do that wow that sounds very very exciting uh, scott and i know you've got also your wife she actually helps you as a partner in a lot of this memory stuff so tell me how that's working out yeah uh, so after you know i joined this club <clears throat> uh or, or rather we started the three of us started this club um, I was so excited about it because, like you said, it is exciting. Once you start getting, once you get started in this, and you can see what your mind is capable of, it's very exciting. You want to share it with other people, and of course, I wanted to tell my wife what we were doing in our memory meetings. And the the, the best way to you know to explain it is to just show her how it works. Because I came to the realization that anybody can do this, and so you know I would teach her some of these techniques and show her that she could do it too. Well, sure enough, you know, this is why we're all convinced now anybody can do this. And one of the, the, the great things about, or one of the best ways to learn is to try teaching someone. If you can do it and it, it goes smoothly, you probably know your material. If it doesn't go smoothly, you probably are missing something. You're not able to explain it well. So it was a good exercise for me to learn to explain it and get her feedback on what works and what doesn't work in terms of, of teaching methods or explanations. But then we, we were both doing the same things now. So we would be driving down the road and turning pictures into numbers and numbers into pictures um, as, you know, as a mnemonic just exercise, but it also became fun. I, I remember this one time uh, we were on vacation in the mountains and we went to a restaurant and we order our food and now we're having to sit there. And it's like, well, what do we do now? And in the time we were waiting for our, our food, I was teaching her, I think it was the 10 commandments, you know, what are the Ten Commandments? Where are they located? And we were doing that exercise and we were just having fun. So we weren't sitting there bored waiting for our food. We were we were learning and, you know, having fun learning. So that's it's been a great it's been great to have her. You know, she tests me. I test her. We learn things together. We work on on pictures. Uh, we did the uh, we memorized together the 40 kings of Israel that are in the Old Testament. Wow. The books of Samuel kings and chronicles there are 40 kings 20 in the southern kingdom of judah 20 in the northern kingdom of israel and she and i sat together we would do this after dinner and we just pick pick five names and we go through and create mnemonic pictures for each of them and link them together in a story and then you know the next night maybe you know whenever we got around to it again we'd review the last five and add five more and we just kept doing that until we had all all 40 of them so that didn't take too very long, but you know, again, this was something we were doing. It was fun and it's educational and it's useful in knowing and understanding your Bible. And it was a you know a together thing that we do, and now we can test each other. And we've also been learning now the genealogy of Jesus from the book of Matthew. There are 41 names on that list. So, and <laughs> that, you know, so again, this is it's it's so exciting when you see what you can do and you realize how. How, how, how useful it is. And when you have friends and uh, family members who are doing it with you and you, you, know, you get together, it, it, it's not just uh, fun. And it's not just entertaining. It's not just educational and uh, edifying. It is fun. And we're having a lot of fun doing it, which is why we want to share it with you. Well, uh, tell me about, you said you, you mentioned that you learned the Ten Commandments. Could you tell me about the Ten Commandments and how you learned them? And what are the Ten Commandments? Well, sure. Um, we used we actually used uh, an, another method called peg words. <laughs> peg words are uh, is, is when you associate with each number a particular picture. So, uh, for you know, example, um, the first commandment that would be represented by the number one, um, um, and then the number one is is a is a T or a D letter in, in the pseudo numerology. And number two is an N and, and it goes on like that. I'm not gonna show them all to you because it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't really connect with people very much. 
But uh, let me just give you an example. So number three, the third commandment is not to take the, the Lord's name in vain. It's found in Exodus chapter 20, verse seven. And the, so for my peg word for the number three is a home. So home is represents the number three. So when I see this home and I picture it in my mind and, and the home that I use is the house from the Disney Pixar film Up. You may remember this, uh, this is the house that had the helium balloons and it flew away into, on an adventure basically, uh, which is you know something that houses don't do filled with balloons. So that's very memorable. So I have this home, this home, uh, reminds me, rem uh, let's, gets me connected to the number three. So if I want to know the third commandment, I start with the home. Well, in this picture on the home, there's a weather vane on top of the house. And the weather vane is a cow. Now, I don't think cows are usually what you find on a weather vane. It's, it's probably a rooster it is very common, but a cow is not something you're going to see on a weather vane. So the vane, the word vane gets me to do not take the Lord's name in vain. So that reminds me of the content of the third commandment. And the cow, now cow is a picture for the peg word uh, of seven, or it is the peg word for the number seven. So the cow, because I know the peg word systems, and this is something you have to learn the peg words in order to be able to use them. But because I know them, when I see the cow in my mental image, in that weather vane on top of the home, then I know that this is uh, verse seven. Exodus chapter 20, I don't have to remember because I know where the, the Ten Commandments are. And th but the, the, the cow gives me seven, the vein gives me uh, take the Lord's name in vain, and the uh, home gets me to number three. So if someone says, uh, what is the third commandment? I, I essentially am doing a lookup in my, in my mind. It's almost like you've turned your mind into a filing cabinet. You pull out the drawer, you go to that number three, and, and you find what's in there. Well, what's in there is, is this picture of the how the home with the the weather vane of of a cow and the, the, that reminds me it's do not take the lord's name in vain and if you know someone then says well where is it located in the bible where well, it's exodus chapter 20 verse 7 and then in the other direction if somebody says what's at verse 7 i can tell you that's the third commandment or if they say where does it say the lord's name is vain i can go to you know i can say that's the third commandment or that's verse 7 so all these things are are linked together in my mind by the picture and pictures are easy to remember numbers are not but all these numbers now are encoded in these pictures and the pictures are easy to recall so then uh, in that way we can do all the commandments in and out of order we could do them forward we can do them backwards or you can just say what's the seventh what's the third what's the fourth i can do them in in any order like that and just recall um at, them at any time so that's you know this is demonstrates the power of the um, mnemonic system. So what are the Ten Commandments? <laughs> okay. The Ten Commandments, beginning in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2, the first commandment is, uh, you shall love, or, uh, I am Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. That's verses 2 and 3. Uh, the second commandment is the... Um, the second commandment is not to make any idols, and that's in verse 4. It says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, Yahweh your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the sons to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments." The third commandment, as I already told you, is uh, not to take the, the Lord's name in vain. It's found in verse 7, and it says, You shall not take the name of Yahweh your God in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Now, we're the disciples of Yahweh, so I sometimes say Yahweh instead of the Lord. I just, uh, you know, go back to the original text there. But uh, you don't have to do that. Um, the fourth commandment is the Sabbath commandment. It's in verses 8 through 11. It goes, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to Yahweh your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or uh, your livestock or the stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. 
The fifth commandment is honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that Yahweh your God is giving you. That's verse 12. The sixth commandment is you shall not murder. That's verse 13. The seventh commandment is you shall not commit adultery. That's verse 14. The eighth commandment is you shall not steal. That's verse 15. The ninth commandment is you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. That is in uh, verse 16. And then the 10th commandment is you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. And that's in verse 17. So there are the 10 commandments in their entirety, the, the whole text from Exodus 20, verse 2, all the way to 17. Wow, that was very impressive. And it's amazing how you've learned all this in such a short amount of time. I mean, it's just amazing to hear it from somebody that's learning it and really knows the Bible because, you know, unfortunately, according to one study, a lot of atheists know the Bible even better than Christians, which is unfortunate. Yep. Just like the Bible says, but his delight is the law of the Lord, and in the law of the Lord, or the law of Yahweh, does he meditate day and night? So let's plant our hearts in the Bible, and let's meditate on the word of God, you know, to so we won't sin against him. You know, if we know the Bible, and we meditate on the Bible, Psalm 119, 11, you know, that we learn the Bible so we don't sin against God. And I think it really does help us in our journey, our spiritual journey uh, towards God's kingdom. 